right. Let's talk about movies. So this, this, um, what have you been watching at the moment? Entertainment wise. Huh. Um, yeah, really interesting range of things. Um, so, uh, you know, the first, the first stuff that I started really getting into um, at the start of lockdown was what I should call pandemic porn. <laughs> <laughs> we got into all the pandemic porn, like yeah. Uh, so you watched Outbreak. You watched uh, what was it? Did you watch the one with um that Spanish movie with zombies and stuff like that? Yeah, like well, you know, like zombies. Zombies are uh, you know like another dimension. There's actually a really good um. There's actually a really good one on TVNZ on demand at the moment. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It might come back to me. Um, it People kind of turn into zombies, but they've kind of played down the zombie thing and they've gone more into kind of like the, the pandemic mode. Mm. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Ebola meets COVID-19 meets some transforming kind of zombie type disease yeah. um, but the the one that was probably the most interesting the most interesting kind of pandemic porn that we've kind of watched was one which once again is on Netflix but it's actually a Nigerian production and it's called 93 days and it's based around the outbreak of Ebola uh, mm. I think in like 2014. And and yes, that, right. it came out last year, wasn't it? Is it the one that came out last year about the whole in America how they were trying to find the cure for it or something? Is it the one or? Uh, yeah, I it, yeah, it came out. Yeah, it came out last year, um, and it was all about uh, the 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 big the big Ebola outbreak that happened. Mm -hmm. And of course, the whole premise of the thing, and and what's really fascinating is, uh, if you watch either um, Outbreak, Contagion, or this one, Ninety Three Days, and lots of others, mm -hmm. what's really frightening is that it quickly goes from being kind of like a drama movie or whatever, but because now everyone's awareness of pandemics has been like, like everyone has now gone through like almost like a crash course in pandemics mm. it's like droplets from your mouth from your nose the things you yeah. touch the you touch something you put your hand on your mouth like and so you're watching this film and they usually all start pretty much the same mm. it, you kind of quickly work out that someone's potentially been infected with something and then yeah. what you see is that you see them touching stuff they're touching everything they're coughing, yeah. they're spluttering, they're sitting next to people, they're touching people. They're like, and, and the whole time you're just going like, ah, 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 ah. It's, like a, it's like watching a horror movie because you start to realise how easily some of these things are spread. But 93 yeah. Days is really fascinating because it, it, it's, um, it's a Nigerian production um, with maybe more kind of English kind of production values mixed with obviously, you know, African pr production um, uh, approach. Um, so it's got kind of like a very non-Hollywood approach. So it's not it's not the sort of thing that you would watch if you, if you want to watch an action movie. But if you want to watch the unfolding of a potential disaster horror movie that, that quickly gets move to um, like you know this is what people forget right is that COVID-19 is 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 not our our first attempt at right. um, dealing with pandemics yeah. um, and things like Ebola haven't gone away like they're not they're, they're, like that has not you know, gone away as a threat. And in fact, you know, the problem that we face most at the moment is that 
we in, in our attempt to just solely focus on COVID-19, yeah. that all of a sudden the world forgets about all of the other kind of challenges. So I totally recommend 90, 93 days. Mm -hmm. uh, the other... Did, you, um, did, yeah. did you watch Outbreak again? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, you know, and, Outbreak is the, the highest, uh, like, is the number one uh, movie uh, that the, any, anybody in the world is watching right now i saw a uh, a report on that because of fact you know it came out in 1993 and it wasn't a bunch again ebola uh, wolfgang peterson uh, Russo, yeah. morgan freeman got himself, got himself morgan freeman yeah. dustin hoffman uh what was that about that was about uh yeah, and African monkey, deadly virus spreading throughout California time brought that was brought to America by an African monkey. Mm, mm. Yes. Um, and look, you know, to be honest, some of these kind of mix, and what's really interesting about them is that uh, they 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 vary around um, kind of, you know, on, on one level, their production values. Yeah, yeah. They also, um, some of them have aged really well. Mm. Um, and uh, some of them are really interesting to, to look back on and, and you start to sort of see the ones that, obviously did a lot of research around infectious diseases mm -hmm. and and the sorts of things. So, in, you know, the really good movies sort of show you on one hand all of the really awesome things that you should do and they show yeah. the value of PPE and, mm -hmm. and like, personal protective equipment and, and, and like, really value that. They, they show you in labs how they've got these, you know, like... Um, uh, these uh, BSL three level labs, BSL four yep. level labs, and and how they operate because they're dealing with such highly infectious diseases, you know. And then there's a, the, you know, then there's these other movies whereby you go like, oh my god, like that's so implausible because like you would not be wandering around a lab with no personal protective equipment dealing exactly. with patients, um, yeah, because you know, suppose, like some of these uh, TV things and movies, they've been made because it, it would be impractical and also, um, what's the word, like it, it just wouldn't flow creatively because mm. people haven't worked out how to make a movie with people with masks over their face all the time. And it's like, if they've got all the equipment over their face and all this sort of stuff and, like, you know, like it, they haven't worked out how to make a movie. Like, a, 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 it's not a fun movie if you can't hear the actors or you can't see their faces. Um, the 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 but the one which has um, probably been more interesting is is the the content that has has been released potentially as a consequence, or maybe it was planned. Um, uh, as a result of all of this. And so the thing that we've been watching most recently is Planet of the Humans by Michael Moore. It's, it's, um, it's uh, by another um, close friend of his, Jeff Gibbs. Um, it's got the Michael Moore kind of banner over it. Um, but it's kind of like the alternate Al Gore moment. So um, did you uh, end up watching um, Contagion as well? Yes. Oh, the we one did. I was thinking about, the one I was thinking about was, I think it was uh, Quarantine. I'm not too um, sure if I've seen Quarantine, but you know, you know the one which um, actually really um, got me, and I can't remember which one it was, whether it was Outbreak or Contagion, but um, it was the one where... You know, 
and and maybe it was contagion but the the time the time frame that the movie dealt with they were in the movie and obviously it's for script purposes right so you and i know yeah. how these things work right you're making yeah. a movie you want to get a point across but you can't necessarily deal with um the real time frames that these things might happen on so with with um i think it was contagion that the way that they did it was that they compressed the timeline so they they kind of like from a script perspective invented a disease that worked about i think maybe like 10 times quicker than COVID 19 mm. as far as time time spans so it, for them you know we're now four months into this, whereas, you know, they, they were into like the breakdown of civil society after about 30 days, you know, like they, they were working on a much more compressed time frame for, for the purpose of the movie. But what, what was really fascinating was not the disease and not the spread, because now, you know, like we're all, we're all experts Right, we're all experts on this stuff now, right? You know, we know. Yeah, I mean, on. this is the thing about it's the crazy thing. It's like we used to watch and be entertained about this crazy stuff, but now we know how to take care of ourselves when this crazy stuff happens. We're yeah, so that, self aware. That stuff is all like, you know, like training videos. But what was really interesting was that you reach the same. Uh, so there are two crucial points in that movie which I think we, we should kind of really think about. One, mm. the kind of breakdown of civil society. So what happens when not enough people ha can get food, when supply chains break down, all that sort of stuff. And I think we're starting to see the beginnings of that um, in America at the moment. I'm going to see it in other yeah. countries as well. But, but well, they were saying in Europe, Right. Um, uh, what, we're not hearing a lot, but I, I, I know some people who have been discussing it about how the ATM machines aren't working. The banks aren't letting people get to their money and people are turning up there with access trying to get into it. And this is in Europe. So we're seeing like you're right. We're seeing the slow erosion of society uh, of what you know these movies are talking about. But yeah, and, like, and it's accidentally too, right? So, you know, like there's so much that we take for granted. Like, um, you know, like New Zealand's got incredibly fantastic internet. Um, I was actually very pleased recently to hear an interview on Radio New Zealand um, about New Zealand's internet, uh, internet infrastructure. And what they were saying was that at, at the at the peak, at the peak of New Zealand's internet usage, mm. the infrastructure that New Zealand has managed to build out so far, at the peak, mm. they still had 25% capacity spare. Like yeah. that is amazing. Well, that is amazing. I mean, I've been doing interviews with American um, uh, people living in America, right? California, Oregon, um, um, I think somebody was in Georgia today. Um, yesterday, I did one from an Estonia. Um, and so I get to see how bad their service is on the internet, how it crashes and, um, you know, um, starts sputtering. Like I was on today on a mobile and um, the, his mobile was just sputtering and he would just like, you know, and we, you're right. We have great internet. And, mm. you know, um, I mean, I let my neighbor use my, um, my Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> and, I, and I still have it on my, and on my data on my cell phone with my internet. I still have my laptop on my internet. And then I can bring out the other uh, laptop, the one that's just old as, and they can still work. So I can, on my service provider, I have four things working as well as, uh, three, yeah, four things working, three things working, as well as letting somebody else use it as well. Compared mm. to one person using their, in, you know, just in America, not being able to connect. Mm. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I've noticed this over the last two years when I've been, you know, being more involved in the comic book uh, industry, coming back into it, having to, you know, change things, send things across and get meetings done over the, over Skype and stuff. 
And you're right. I think just to, to hear that we have 25% more to spare is amazing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, it shows that, you know, if you um, look at the way that the internet travels across the world is that um, we, we've got this really incredible technology, but the problem is, is that it needs highly skilled people to fix this stuff. So my, yes. most of, for example, you know, New Zealand and the world connection through the internet is through these right. undersea cables, right? Yeah. Now, they break regularly for lots of different reasons, you know, underground earthquake activity, just natural breakages, accidents, all sorts of things. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's, um, you know, the fact that I think the world has actually held together so far has actually been, you know, I, I quite interesting, quite interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe more. Yeah, I, I mean, well, I mean, you remember we were talking in the other um, stream about like um, the brain drain. So, I mean, I I know there was at least about over two thousand techies that went overseas in uh, two thousand eight, mm. two thousand seven, two thousand six, two thousand eight. That yeah. brain drain has cost our country so much, and um. You know, it's it's just um, it just it, it drives me crazy that we've we've gotten to a point where now we have to import, right? Import techies to come and work in New Zealand when we let go of our own. Um, and I think oh, the other thing is that um, we're watching we're watching uh, like we're talking about Netflix and stuff and. Netflix is losing so much of its property over to HBO Max. I like Friends, South Park, I think didn't even go there, but like South Park is going there. Studio Ghibli, uh, Ghibli from Japan, uh, Misaki, Hisao Misaki, Misaki, like uh, I think it was like Lord of the F uh, Fireflies or something like, like that. Um, Howl's, uh, Howl's Moving Castle, all that great stuff, you know. Um, all these movies there. Um, also, just the whole the inter entertainment industry itself is changing. I mean, I've been watching this for the last six months, how the streaming works, right? Like we've, we've been mm -hmm. sit at home and watch movies instead of going out now because we're sick and tired of them making blockbusters that are just stupid. Right? They're just they just stupid, and um, and then we go. Why do we want to pay spend hundred dollars to take our kids to the movies, especially if you're family of five, when we just can pay fifteen dollars a month and watch Netflix? Yeah. Why? So now streaming has taught us to stay home. Lockdown has taught us to stay home, right? Now we've got into the idea of staying home, watching our movies at home, watching our TVs at home, consuming at home. The other thing is that there's now too many choices coming. So, like Peacock is supposed to start up, Apple TV's there. I, th I think it's, um, I'm not sure who put up Peacock, uh, but it's another streaming site that's coming on board soon. HBO Max got 10,000 new hours of, um, you know, entertainment, movies, TV mm -hmm. shows, uh, new uh, Looney Tunes. Uh, they just released a um, new show that's coming on. It's on HBO, HBO called Bo uh, Before Runners. Before Runners. It's like this movie where people from the past 200 year, 2,000 years are just popping up in modern times, like current times. So you've got Vikings just popping up. People from the, <laughs> like, have the plague popping up in the middle of friggin' France. Uh, it's done. Hey, it's, we need the yeah. help. And so it's quite accept, um, because I thought, well, you know, nobody, wanted, I mean, of course, so many other sort of, not, you know, not to this level. And um, and I, it was the first one that HBO did for their European, 
and moves the old, um, I think, through for the Asia network, but they're, um, um, John, John is saying here that, hold on, give me a sec, and check, uh, Disney Plus and Amazon cheaper than Netflix. Yeah, I mean, sure, uh, it can be cheaper, John, but I mean, the thing is that when you when you realize that you've already seen all those Disney films, you've you know growing up, if you're like in your thirties and forties, you've already seen it. Your kids have already rent, you know, you've already rented out those movies for your kids, and so the only thing that got you to go over to Disney Plus was Mandalorian, and we saw that they had 50, 50 million new subscribers, and once Mandalorian was over, people left. People just said, ah, ah, you know, I've seen what I want to. See. That's it. Uh, the other thing is uh, Lightbox and Netflix free with Spark Max broadband. So, so now you can yeah, so you can get also you know Lightbox and Netflix free with Spark, you know on the on the telecom network. But that's the other thing. See, like because I've been thinking saying about like on uh, on my own private um, page, uh, not so much on this one that we need to invest more in our own uh, country's uh, infrastructure and our own um, businesses and our own productions. And telecoms, one of them, you know. So I mean, uh, we've been, uh, you know, we let Vodafone come in and take over our lines and all that. And we thought, yeah, new, new, new. But then in return, we got Vodafone investing back into the country, which is a good play uh, into the sports arena and stuff, you know. Um, but um, you know, telecoms offering all these different things to get get us back in. And I think we're going to see more of that, right? Because um, all these companies are going to want our business because they're running out of money. So it'll be cheaper. And we were talking about the housing before about renting and stuff. So the product that they're putting out, like I know that um, I posted the other day with my, um, with my provider that they give you $35 for six months a month of internet. You know, and the same one that I'm on where I can use four different connections and still get this sort of, you know, have a live stream with you. Um, and so they already know that the next six months is going to be hard on them. So they're going to have to lower their prices. And that's what I was thinking about. Um, HBO Max is doing fifteen ninety nine, I think it was, or forty ninety nine coming into their um, their streaming prices next um, and 28th of May. So because apart, and Disney has less new product than HBO Max does. And even Netflix is the only one that has a most part of, you know, like they have like maybe about 80 or 30,000 um, hours or 50,000, I think it was out. No, it was 80,000 hours of content. Whereas mm. um, uh, HBO Max has 10,000 hours of new content, uh, content altogether. And Disney only has about 3,000 of new content. So it doesn't add up. Yeah, you're right. Um, John's saying that like uh, Clone Wars, Star Wars, Avengers titles on on Disney. Yeah, but you know, we already watched already those. Watched so those. Now we're going to that's it. Play it. That's the thing. It's like you've already been to the movies, paid your friggin' twenty, thirty dollars. Why would you want to go and pay again to watch it? And this is the thing. So I mean, I've got family members who have both Disney and Netflix. And I kind of mm -hmm. go, well, why? <laughs> you know, why? It's like yeah. there's too much choices in the end. Like, do you find it? Like, if there's too much choices, you just go do what you know. Well, you know, this is this comes back down to, like, what are you watching and why? Mm. Uh, one of the things I've so, – so here's the most – like, my most hated – but most loved um, streaming service is Amazon Prime. Mm. Uh, very inexpensive, mm. but Amazon Prime suffers from this really unusual problem whereby, and Amazon is a big company, right? So you can understand why they've kind of done this. So, uh, if you're thinking about strategic 
choices around streaming services and like what, what if we we're talking about kind of the, the financial impact to, to people and this has been actually written about a bit which is like how many streaming services can you pay for right? that's it before you know it you're going to end up in this like crazy situation whereby um uh i don't know too much about you know say new zealand streaming pay tv services but in australia it ends up in this crazy situation whereby um to get kind of like even a sensible level of like streaming service you need to pay yep. 125 dollars a month of which some things became mandatory movies mm. football you know sports whatever but the crazy thing is, is that um, we're almost going back to that situation whereby to get the good variety of programming, you're going to have to layer up your streaming services. And before you know it, you could easily get back up to $100 a month. Right? Exactly. And so I think ultimately what we're after is that you, you want to have a streaming service whereby... I, I think all of us want to have a streaming service whereby we want to go like, I don't know, whatever whatever the price point is somewhere. But I don't think we want to be, I, I, I think it would be unrealistic to say we want to pay $9 a month. And I think it's totally incomprehensible to say to people, you, you got to pay $99 a month. But somewhere yeah. in between that, depending on what you like. But Amazon Prime is a, fantastic service whereby yeah. they've funded some of the best tv shows i've ever seen on tv apart from hbo yeah. hbo seems to be consistently the one that seems to really pump out really great thought-provoking stuff but it comes down to what you're into now with amazon prime they, they've invested in some of the best tv that has ever been made yeah. But then once you're once you've seen it, once you've like you know, you could binge watch the best of what they've had in lockdown. Yeah. And then that's it. You gotta turn it off. Because there's nothing left after that. Because it, it it they've got like see their streaming service is like A plus plus at one end. Mm. And then once you watch all of those, you're into like C minus minus D F. Yeah. Uh, Netflix, their approach, I think, is almost kind of like some sort of balance between w w occasionally we'll have a A plus. Mm. And mm. we might even have some shows whereby a season might be an A plus, but then some might be a Yep. C, but you might get invested enough such that you'll last to season three and it'll kind of maybe um, like a, a, a really great example recently on Netflix was their um, their one sex education, mm. which started out probably as a A, um, became a B and then went to an A plus, you know, it's like it really you know kind of undulates um and because there's all of these economic forces around them and and uh, but but here's the here's the really interesting thing which is that the 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 thing that's behind all of this is that um one of the great things i love about streaming is that there's no ads. Like yes. Any, any genuine creative person goes, um, I don't want to be making art or making something really, you know, relevant or engaging you. And then I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to lose you after 10 minutes because we have to have an ad break. Yeah. And so I think many people have turned genuinely to streaming services because they actually, whether they realize it or not, 
they value the lack of ads. But then the yeah. flip side of that is that um, then the danger is, is that the ads that you're not watching as a break, hmm. you then end up watching some shows that are almost hmm. like an endless ad break in their own right. Yeah. It just switches over to the next one and the next one. I noticed that about, uh, I think I was watching, oh, I can't, um, I watched I watched the uh, resleeved uh, the prequel animated movie to uh, Altered Carbon because I love that show and I haven't seen a no new series but I wanted to watch that one because it's animated and I love you know I love animate made movies especially anime and it just went into this new show it's like this new show is playing I'm like what new why is this new show playing I'm trying to figure out who was doing all the artwork on this you know and like this is my one complaint is that there's the credits just go into this little box in the corner right hand and the new show comes up and you don't know who's working on what because, because i like to look up the people's name to find out what else they've worked on so i can find out what else i might like of theirs i have i have this binge thing that i like to do is like if i find someone's uh um, an artist or um, you know a director or a writer or an actor, I like to watch everything they've done because so I can get an idea of who they are as a creative person. And I think um, it, that that's the one thing that I find that is negative about net is the fact that the credits just go away and they make it this you know bring the new show on in about thirty seconds or something. Well, you know, this this came out in an article uh, not too long ago, which is that um, uh, the streaming service model has got a bit of a challenge also because if you if you because um, and you can you can see this in the um, uh, way that. Um, Netflix as a public company in the US have to report, right? So their you know, like key indicators are things like new subscribers, right? So straight away, you realize that there's a bit of a challenge, right? Because there's only so many people in the world. So there's only so many people who can watch. Then yeah. you have other challenges as what we've been... Um, um, experiencing not so much in New Zealand and once again New Zealand's been very shielded from this I think in many respects but in countries like uh, the US and Australia they've uh, Net Netflix have had to be kind of like good pandemic corporate citizens and to go we have to um, restrict the um, bandwidth and so services like, uh, you know, streaming services have, have been working with governments to okay. reduce their bandwidth that they're pushing things down it. So, so even though normally you might think that you're getting like a, 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 a you know, high definition download, you're getting like a standard definition download because they're having to balance the fact that there's been this extraordinary amount of people streaming yeah so they've had to you know restrict the bandwidth so they're working with government around around that sort of stuff so you get into this kind of like really interesting situation whereby um the media companies need new subscribers there's limitations to the infrastructure and the bandwidth of the internet and so um they're in jeopardy from, uh, like, they need new subscribers to make money. But then, and, and, and so in order to attract new subscribers, they need new shows, right? And so then you get these shows that are really successful, great shows. But the problem is, is that they may be in season four, right? And who's necessarily prepared to sit through the first three seasons um and so it's very difficult to like continue a blockbuster 
series into season yeah. three or season four because mm. people haven't come on the journey of the experience and the story. And so there's, the, like, these streaming services are actually under um, tremendous, you know, tremendous amount of pressure. So, so the thing that I I would actually like, you know, that I think needs to be poured out there, is that um, I think our streaming services are um, like not that there's, not, you know, like let's not feel too sorry for them, but mm. but they are facing um, economic um, financial pressures which um, they were always probably going to face. Like, you know, if we had no pandemic, right, the way that things would have run would have been that um, it would have been a financial disaster. Right. Because what people would have done, right, is to, like, like sports. See, see the reason why, see, see like... I actually kind of wonder whether sports will ever, ever, ever come back in the way that it did. Because, see, mm. the problem with sports was that everyone kept on, like, trying to gazump everybody else and, like, going, like, oh, we'll pay you $100 million for TV rights. Oh, we'll pay you right. $500 million. Oh, we'll pay you a billion. We'll pay you $5 billion, right? Right. It's kind of like, really? Like, yeah. is this the economic... There is no money really? like that anymore. No, no. Yeah, and that's going to change the whole environment of entertainment, sports. Uh, I think the pandemic has done us a favour. Yeah, it's it's definitely changed the way we, um, you know, we consume entertainment, and it's and um, it, like we uh, Marvel already has cancelled a whole bunch of shows because mm. uh, because Disney has no money. Disney has to borrow eleven billion dollars to stay afloat, so they basically say no, 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 no. Anything that they were going to think of uh, that was going to go into production or pre-production, so said no, and we're going to stick. You know, and this is going to change what they put out. So the rubbish will be, you know, will be like, what do the consumer wants now? Not what do we want? Not what political game we're going to play with people? What do what is going to sell right now? And what's selling right now? Mandalorian. So, season one finished. Season two is about to start. Season three has already been ordered. Already, so they're already going into season three making it right. So that sells, and they're like they know that they've got a product that is actually people like, and uh, anything that people don't like, they need to throw away right away. Otherwise. All they're going to do is create product that there is going to be no consumer base for it. I mean, we saw that with a whole bunch of movies. Like, you look at Terminator, right? Terminator, they made Terminator that nobody wanted. And they killed John in the first five minutes. And it's like, isn't John the savior of the world? <laughs> isn't that the whole point of it? It's like, you know, it's like like in Heroes. Remember Heroes? Um, where they, like, save the cheerleader, save the world. And it's like, we did say this year, I don't know what. <laughs> you know, it makes no more sense anymore after that. So here's the, here's the hot tip that I want to share. I'm going to share exclusively with you. This is the end of actors. Yeah. You yeah. know, like we, we, you know, we've, We've been working on this now for like decades. I remember, yeah. I can't quite remember the first movie. I think it was like, I think it was Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy was the. Um, oh, no, no. It was Simone. Sim 1. Remember Sim 1? Yeah, yeah. And it was but, a Kiri director. He's one of my favorite directors. I'll, I'll bring this up because that was when yeah. they actually. Decided they were going to create a actress who was from the start a simulated and to um, and to basically um, how is it spelled? Sim one. But but yes, I'm I'm glad I'm glad that you um, 
and I would expect that you would be onto this, whereby it's kind of like human actors are a dying breed, right? Yep. Let's, let's just be really honest about this. Let's just, you know, sorry for anyone out there who, who hasn't heard the news, but if you're a human actor, I'm sorry, but you're... You're you're the last of your kind, um, and and what the, this global ec epidemic will precipitate is is the death of actors. Um, sadly, um, I think I think, um, but I, I but I think they will live in a different way because I think what will happen is that we've now reached the point whereby the amount of um, the the availability of technology and and um, the way that this can be done now, like even with um, normal animation, all, all, all the best an animation. In fact, the smartest thing that was done by animators was that what they did was that they worked out a way to 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 use human actors. Like Toy Story, I still think is probably the best representation of real human actors being you know represented in a in a you know cgi type way um lord of rings right uh, um lord of rings a very own lord of rings with um what's his name yeah. uh god that creature my precious uh, Jackson? oh no sorry um, that was a nightmare uh, yeah uh you know um can't remember but like you know the whole character is a freaking cgi character where with a you know with um i can't even remember his name um but um you know he, yeah my precious my precious and you're right with the final when the final fantasy came out movie came out with the hair right where they said they could do each strand of hair it yeah. kind of put a shock into the whole movie industry yeah to say, hey, guess what? You guys have been mucking around and be and misbehaving. And right now, this is the thing, right now, is I played the thing about how celebrities think they're all important in their mansions, right at the start of the other bit, um, live stream we did. This behavior and um, of them behaving like they're, they, and they're living in their magic world, right? And then saying you who can't afford toilet paper, they're just like you, you know. And while while Madonna sits in her little bathtub with rose petals and um, I guess milk, you know, and and a piano, someone p playing piano on the side there in the friggin' my apartment size room, apartment size bathroom, and going we're just like you, we're all in this together. I'm like, just shut up. <laughs> go read a book leave us alone get off the internet and but, the thing is that you know they've got the technology now to basically yeah. replace all of and and part of the problem with um with um uh, actors um and look you know i don't want to be unfair to, to people who's who who are genuinely its craft and and yeah. uh, this is where i think you know is the competitive difference right the competitive difference yeah. will come by who can make really awesome amazing things still with human actors but the mainstream you know porridge of of contents mm. um will have to come from computer generated cgi perhaps some human actors in behind who show natural movements but um uh, the porridge you know the 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 porridge of of content will will come from CGI because um, most actors and that whole thing is just just so bothersome because um, they're egotistical they're yes. they're rude they're they they like they 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 yeah. they get on Twitter yeah. um, they they reveal you know inappropriate things on facebook and other yep. social media and and so you know kind of like the perfect actor is 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 has been already developed yeah, and one without any emotion one without any baggage 
any political leaning, any backstory, any, um, yep. you know, um, background, just a complete blank can canvas that you can just put yep. whatever you want in it. And, and like I said, with, with the re-sleeve, right? With the re-sleeve, all animated. Mm. And and no nobody getting hurt. Amazing sequences, things blowing up, people getting, mm. you know, it's violent movie. It's about the Yakuza and so on. So people are getting cut up and chopped. Um, full body armor. Guess what? It's all computer generated. So there's no model studio making it. There is yeah. no makeup. There's no uh, cameraman, cinematography, and all that. It's all done in house with this, uh, with the yeah. arrangement of the um, computer um, uh, apps. Uh, there's no uh, catering, right? There's no friggin' uh, power, like mess stage setups and all that. And 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 like you said, no ego. Yep. No, and, nobody and, getting on Twitter and going off on a rant and damaging the studio, going off in and, an interview and damaging the studio, and no infection problems, right? So, yeah. um, you know, yeah. even if you do need to use, um, and so all of this, and and so this is one of the interesting things about content production is that, um, and also where New Zealand is uh, incredibly well placed because yes. New Zealand has got one of the best internet connections to the world than, than mm -hmm. most other countries. And so, you know, New Zealand could seriously become a, a yeah. really serious um, content um, producer in, in lots yeah. of different ways um, uh, because, you know, you don't need to have humans anymore. Yeah. Right? You have to. Now, I'm not saying that that's not unimportant. And, and I think this kind of comes back into our conversation about art, right? It's like, where is the art in this? And, and, and maybe one of the simplistic ways of defining art is that it's about uh, the immediacy of the experience. Uh, yeah. And, and I actually think that, you know, perhaps one of the best things that we could do is, is to perhaps separate out now um, kind of this large-scale mass-produced kind of content um, series, you know, um, production aspects um, and separate that from genuine, amazing human immediacy-based productions where you're really delving into, you know, humans. Um, mm -hmm. but see, this is where I think comics is really fascinating because, see, mm -hmm. see comics, comics, um, you know, comics have, uh, and maybe we should do this as a, as a separate kind of thing, right? Because, like, I'm not really a comic person, but... Mm -hmm. um, What's really interesting is that, you know, comics have evolved from, you know, the page to yeah. movies. Yeah. And, and, and that was, you know, potentially seen as like an evolution. Mm. But perhaps, you know, um, um, that was a devolution. And yeah. what we might actually see is, is, is comics come back you know, to the storytelling, you know, honesty and authenticity that they um, mm. have always had um, and and that, you know, all of this, you know, sort of blossoming or profiting from comics through the Marvel series yeah. and blah, blah, well, blah, blah. Well, talking about that, right, uh, about the profiting yeah. of it. So... <laughs> But, but I think we're going to see a return to the authenticity of what comics are really about. And, and, yeah. and I actually think this warrants a serious kind of thinking about what were comics about because they've lasted and persisted for so long. And I think shall, we, we can... um, shall we round this off and then, um, you know. Well, we should um... do it. well, we've got 10 more minutes before we make the hour. Okay, well, let me just tell you about, like, give you this little thing about actors, right? And how they can be very weird and strange. Mm. So two days ago, Courtney Cox, 
from Friends, right? Isn't she the actress on Friends? Yeah, Friends. She's 55 now. Took to uh, Instagram in honor of Earth Day to call for an urgent need to protect the planet during this time of need. Happy Earth Day, everyone. Uh, by protecting our natural ecosystems, we can stop the illegal wildlife trade, which I'm all behind, which has caused the deadliest disease of our lifetimes, accused, uh, including HIV, SARS, and COVID-19. This Earth Day help space, uh, at Space for Giants protect ecosystems and promote a health thing. So she thinks uh, that uh, basically uh, illegal uh, wildlife trade caused coronavirus. See, talking about people like egos of actors and stuff, you know, just not really. It's like religious people saying this is a punishment from God, you know, mm. right? Or or saying that pray it all away, or you know, or it's 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 because of some beer, right? It's carried through the beer, Mexican Corona beer, right? It's a farcical thing. All we know, it came out of a lab and, and it's but because of bat, it got transmitted to humans. We all know that. And then this week, somebody said, oh, it might have come through the me meteorite. Did you see that one about NASA having to come up and say, no, it didn't. I haven't seen that yet, but, yeah, you, know, but like, I mean, you know how much I love conspiracy theories and debunking we, my, my own conspiracy just, They damage their own... Um, their own principles, but like their own ideologies. Like, like I, I really go for the fact that, hey, illegal hunting of animals, uh -uh. leave wildlife. We need to have that going forward. Stop hunting friggin' lions and tigers and all that, elephants, leave them, you know? Um, but doing, doing that didn't quite coronavirus, <laughs> you know, the insanity of it all. Um, what I'm going to do is I think we'll finish off here because that runs off the whole um, COVID and pop in and let's, let's talk about 10 minutes of comic books because there's some interesting things I want to talk to you about that because I think having your outside view is, um, is very good on this because I'm on the inside. Having an outside view is very good. I'll be back in a minute.